You're listening to The Philosopher's Note on Ask and It Is Given. More wisdom in less time. Hi, this is Brian. Welcome to The Philosopher's Notes on Ask and It Is Given. Learning to Master Your Desires by Esther and Jerry Hicks. We'll start with a quote. There is nothing that you cannot be, do, or have. That's from Esther and Jerry Hicks in their wonderful book, Ask and It Is Given. And for those unfamiliar, Ask and It Is Given is a book written by Esther and Jerry Hicks who channel the wisdom of a group of beings from another dimension who are collectively called Abraham. If you're like me, that freaks you out a bit. Maybe it's my Catholic upbringing or a lack of imagination, but I still get a little uncomfortable with the idea that people channel other beings. In any case, this book rocks. If you haven't read it yet, go get it. If it's been a while since you read it, it might be time for a reread. And the book is really one big quote. It's pretty much the Bible for the law of attraction, and with the science of getting rich, the foundation of the secret. That movie that uh, took the world by storm recently. And I'd pretty much have to copy-paste the book to share all the goodness in it. But alas, that's not the point of these notes, so I'm going to bring you some of my favorite big ideas and trust you'll enjoy them. And of course, much more importantly, I trust you'll live the ones you find resonance with. All right, we'll start with the first big idea, the law of attraction. Quote, every thought vibrates, every thought radiates a signal, and every thought attracts a matching signal back. We call that process the law of attraction. The law of attraction says, that which is likened to itself is drawn. And so, you might see the powerful law of attraction as sort of a universal manager, that sees to it that all thoughts that match one another line up, end quote. Now, that's the best definition of the law of attraction I've read. And like I said, this book is pretty much the Bible for the law of attraction. In the book, Esther and Jerry compare the law of attraction to tuning a radio. You want to listen to something on 102.7 FM? Well, you don't expect to hear it if your radio is set to 98.7, do you? Of course not. The radio waves of one frequency can only be received by a matching tuner, right? Well, the same thing goes in the real world. If you want to receive love and abundance in your life, you need to set your tuner to the same vibrational frequency as love and abundance. To put it bluntly, if you're a jerk, do you expect to receive an overwhelming abundance of love in your life? It's impossible. You're putting out all kinds of jerk energy, and that's pretty much what you'll get back. I can see it in my own life, and I'm sure you can too. Let's take the most mundane example. Let's say we're calling customer service for something. Now, I can be an impatient, angry jerk, and guess what? If the conversation is long enough, typically even the usually kindest customer service agent will respond in kind. On the other hand, I can think about how grateful I am that I live in a world that even allows me to have the problem for which I'm seeking support, and call with an energy of gratitude and eagerness to light this person's day up. What happens? I have a great little exchange with the agent, and we both get off the phone with a smile. Why is that? Esther and Jerry would tell you it's the law of attraction. You're going to get back what you put out. As they say, quote, that which is like unto itself is drawn, end quote. I definitely agree. So pick your radio station consciously, love songs perhaps, and make sure you've got yourself tuned in to hear the wonderful music. All right, that leads us to the next big idea, a visionary. Quote, so for an observer, the better it gets, the better it gets, or the worse it gets, the worse it gets. However, one who is a visionary thrives in all times, end quote. I love this. It's kind of a twist on the classic psychological idea of where we put our locus of control. You've probably heard it before, perhaps many times. Simply, in any given moment, we can choose to be creators of our reality or passive observers slash victims of our reality. You can pretty much determine, scientifically, whether someone is consistently happy or not based on where they put their control. Tell me where you put control, and I'll tell you how happy you are. If you put control outside of yourself, which would be an external locus of control, meaning you blame a bad economy or bad relationship or someone's bad breath for all your problems, then guess what? you're going to go up and down with the circumstances of your world. Economy is good, you're good, or at least better. Relationship is good, you're good. Turn it around and eek, there you go, your life sucks. As Esther and Jerry say, quote, the better it gets, the better it gets, or the worse it gets, the worse it gets, end quote. 
Now, juxtapose that with a creator, a visionary, someone who realizes they can choose how they will look at the world and how they will interpret every event. That's an internal locus of control. They are independent of the ups and downs of their outside world. And, you guessed it, they're much more consistently happy. As Esther and Jerry say, quote, one who is a visionary thrives in all times, end quote. So how about you? Where's your locus of control? The book is all about empowering you to step into your role as a conscious creator of your reality. It's an incredibly powerful thing to do. So I'm kind of nudging you right now. What are you waiting for? Step into that role even more fully than you are now. And as we do that, we'll check into the next big idea, which is emotional fuel gauges. Quote, when the fuel gauge on your vehicle indicates that the tank is empty, you do not criticize the indicator. You receive the information that it has offered you, and you do something about adding more fuel to your tank. Like that, a negative feeling is an indicator that your current choice of thoughts has you offering a vibration that is so out of harmony with your source energy that you are currently disallowing your full connection to that energy stream. You could say your tank is reaching empty. Your emotions do not create, but they do indicate what you are currently attracting. If your emotions are helping you know that your choice of thought is not taking you in the direction that you desire to go, then do something about that. Replenish your connection by choosing better feeling thoughts. End quote. That's really cool. A big theme of the book is the fact that our feelings are a wonderful guidance system to check in and see how closely aligned we are to source energy, or spirit, the Tao, God, whatever you call it. So are you depressed and feeling hopeless? Uh, well, that's a pretty good, actually make that a definitive indicator that your source energy tank is on empty, and you need to fill it up with some more positive thoughts to get yourself more closely aligned with the source. You feeling overflowing enthusiasm for life, a joyful desire to create and to serve? Bingo. That, my friends, is the perfect indicator you are aligned. Your tank is full. You're ready for a great trip with nothing to worry about. God is in the house. Literally, actually. Did you know the word enthusiasm comes from the two little Greek words en and theos? Enthusiasm literally means God within. How cool is that? All right, so all that's exciting, but here's the most powerful part. Just as you'd never criticize your fuel gauge for telling you that you're running low on gas, don't ever criticize yourself and your emotions for telling you that you're currently running low on good thoughts and source energy. Again, you'd never get upset at your fuel gauge when you see it close to E. You'd simply pull over to the nearest gas station and fill up with some gas, right? Okay, so how about this? The next time you're feeling depressed, stressed, angry, whatever, take a look at your fuel gauge. Notice that you're running a little low on source energy, Feel as much gratitude as you can possibly muster and pull over to the next gas station. Whether that's doing some affirmations, going for a run or hike, playing with your baby, doing some volunteer work, dancing to your favorite song, meditating, thinking of all the things you're grateful for, doing a random act of anonymous kindness, whatever your gas station is, fill up with source energy and you'll be back on the road in no time. Fun. And a friendly reminder, this is definitely all, yes, all supposed to be fun. So smile, dance, and enjoy this precious life of yours. I commit to doing the same. And let's move on to our next big idea here, which is your new job. Quote, your work is to simply determine what you want. I love that. So quick question for you. What do you want? Seriously, press pause and yeah, get out your favorite journal if you can. Or just think about it if you're driving or at the gym or whatever. And uh, if you have the journal at the top of the page, write things I want, and then create a nice little or a very big list of everything you can currently think of that you'd like to be, you'd like to do, and you'd like to have. You can go ahead and press pause. I will wait. (laughs) All right. Did you do it? Good. Now, asking ourselves what we want is probably the most important thing we can possibly do for ourselves. Whether it's about big life visions and goals or in-the-moment stuff. For example, let's imagine you're in an argument with your significant other or colleague or friend or whatever. I know it never happens to me either, but let's just pretend. Okay, so let's say that you're in this argument. In the middle of it, take a deep breath and ask yourself, what do I want right now? My hunch is the answer is not, I want to argue. Odds are it's more likely, I want so-and-so to understand why I care so much about this issue. Or, I want this argument to end. 
and I want to show up as the highest version of myself I'm committed to being. Now that's what you really want. And knowing that, you can create it. Okay, so how about this? You're stressed, overwhelmed with your work, whatever. Pause. Take a deep breath and ask yourself, what do I want? Not for the record, how am I going to get it done, but what do I want? Something magical happens when you ask yourself that simple question. When you're really clear on the what, the how seems to take care of itself. Try it out. And one more question, what do you want? Which leads us to the next important point of this whole law of attraction business. The next big idea, can you imagine? Quote, if you have the ability to imagine it, or even to think about it, this universe has the ability and the resources to deliver it fully unto you. End quote. I love that. If you don't believe Esther and Jerry, how about Ralph Waldo Emerson? He says, There's nothing capricious in nature, and the implanting of a desire indicates that its gratification is in the constitution of the creature that feels it. How amazing is that? So Jerry and Esther say, If you have the ability to imagine it, or even to think about it, this universe has the ability and the resources to deliver it fully unto you. And Emerson says, There's nothing capricious in nature and the implanting of a desire indicates that its gratification is in the constitution of the creator that feels it. That's amazing. So if you're taking notes, it goes something like this. One, get clear on what you want. Two, know that you wouldn't have the desire if you slash the universe didn't have the ability to bring it to life. And three, joyously and enthusiastically do the next little thing in front of you. And if you follow one through three, you're bound to be successful. Which leads us to the next big idea, appreciation. Quote, appreciation of others and the appreciation of yourself are the closest vibrational matches to source energy of anything we have ever witnessed anywhere in this universe. That's beautiful. Appreciation. It's impossible to feel stressed, depressed, etc. when you are appreciating someone or something in your life. How could you? Your tank is full of source energy. Okay, so knowing this, what can we do to live with more appreciation, thereby more consistently tapping into and flowing with source energy? This concept is so important that Gay and Katie Hendricks, two wonderful people and the living embodiment of conscious relationships, actually teach people how to give and receive appreciation in their wonderful conscious living and loving workshops. They base their teaching on the scientific findings that the happiest marriages are those that have a ratio of five appreciations or positive interactions to one criticism or negative interaction. The idea is simple. Learn to appreciate more and your happiness will skyrocket. Try it out. Actively work on appreciating people in your life today. Look for all the wonderful things you can appreciate about your spouse, your children, your boss, your colleagues, the cashier at the grocery store, the FedEx guy, everyone and share your appreciations. And get ready for a permagrin, because you get good at appreciating everyone and everything in your life, and you'll be riding a wave of source energy for a long, long time. All right, so speaking of riding waves of source energy for a long time, um, they offer in the book 22 processes that help us get into um, this state that we're looking for and help us keep connected. In fact, over half the book focuses on specific things we can do and exercises we can engage in to keep our mojo flowing. Here are a couple of my favorites. We'll start with a big idea on segment intending. Quote, if you want many things all at the same time, it adds confusion. But when you only focus upon the specifics of what you want in any particular moment, you bring clarity and power to your creation, and therefore speed. And that is the point of segment intending to stop as you are entering a new segment and to identify what it is you most want so that you may give your attention to and therefore draw power unto that, end quote. So you remember our discussion about our new jobs? You know, the one where we're supposed to be asking ourselves, what do I want full time? Well, think of segment intending as moment to moment or segment to segment opportunities to ask yourself what you want to create and then, of course, to create it. So imagine a day in which you consciously intend each segment. Let's say it starts with your head on the pillow. You're getting ready to go to sleep and enter that segment of your day. As you lie there, you set your intention for restful slumber. When you open your beautiful eyes in the morning, you're entering a new segment 
and you can set your intention for that time. Maybe something like, while I'm lying here, I'm imagining my ideal day and getting excited to live with joy and create joy in those I'm blessed to be with today. Not a bad intention. Then you move into the next segment of your day as you brush your teeth, shower, meditate, get ready to go to the gym, and whatever it is you do. Set the intention of doing these things efficiently and with joy. You can imagine all the moments of your day, from driving to work to settling in at your desk to making dinner or going grocery shopping, playing with your kids, talking with your spouse, training at the gym, whatever. Every single one of these segments gives us another opportunity to practice being powerful, deliberate creators of our reality. Without a doubt, I'm most powerful when I'm engaged in this process. My intention for this segment of my life, as I speak these words, to bring a smile to your face while you play with the ideas that can inspire and empower you to live with more and more happiness and joy. All right, that leads us to the next and final big idea, scripting. Quote, you can literally script any life that you desire, and the universe will deliver to you the people, the places, the events, just as you decide them to be. For you are a creator of your own experience. You have only to decide it and allow it to be. End quote. All right. You're a script writer of your life. Imagine you can write the script of your life. Playfully, keyword playfully, pick up a pen, grab your journal, and start writing. Who would you be? What would you do? What would you have? Dream, play, and create. As Esther and Jerry say, this is a fantastic way to, quote, focus the lens of your desire while you remain light and playful and simply feel the joy of living your ideal life, bringing you one step closer to actually experiencing that joy in your life. So, Ms. slash Mr. Scriptwriter, what is it you plan to do with this precious life of yours? All right, that wraps up this note on asking it is given. Let's look at a little bit more on Esther and Jerry Hicks. Look at some other notes you probably will enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And then some of the quotes from the sidebar of the PDF. So, Asking It Is Given is written by Esther and Jerry Hicks, who produce and present the leading-edge Abraham Hicks teachings on the art of allowing our natural well-being to come forth. While presenting open workshops in up to 60 cities a year, they've created more than 600 books, audios, CDs, and videos. Their internationally acclaimed website is abrahamhicks.com. That's from the book. And if you enjoyed this note, you'll probably also like the notes on The Power of Intention, Ralph Waldo Emerson, As a Man Thinketh, Tony Robbins, and The Science of Getting Rich. All right, now we'll look at those quotes in the sidebar. Start with Esther and Jerry Hicks who say, It is our desire that you become one who is happy with that which you are and with that which you have, while at the same time being eager for more. That is the optimal creative vantage point, to stand on the brink of what is coming, feeling eager, optimistic anticipation, with no feelings of impatience, doubt, or unworthiness, hindering the receiving of it. That is the science of deliberate creation at its best. And they say, you are here to experience outrageous joy. Ralph Waldo Emerson shares, enthusiasm is one of the most powerful engines of success. When you do a thing, do it with all your might. Put your whole soul into it. Stamp it with your own personality. Be active, be energetic, be enthusiastic and faithful, and you will accomplish your object. Nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. Emerson also says, there's nothing capricious in nature, and the implanting of a desire indicates that its gratification is in the constitution of the creature that feels it. And Esther and Jerry Hicks say, if you have the ability to imagine it or even to think about it, this universe has the ability and the resources to deliver it fully unto you. Esther and Jerry say, as you are moving through such a day, you will feel the power and the momentum of your intentions building. You will find yourself feeling gloriously invincible. You will feel as if there is nothing that you cannot be, do, or have as you are seeing yourself again and again in creative control of your own life experience. And finally, Wayne Dyer says, When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. All right. Hope you enjoyed this note on Ask and It Is Given. And uh, I ask you, what do you want Remember that you can have that which you want to be, do, and have. And start by having an absolutely fantastic day. Look forward to sharing more with you soon. Bye.
We hope you enjoyed this Philosopher's Note. Please go to www.philosophersnotes.com to download more.